Okay, so go ahead and graph that first one. Hopefully you've switched letters C and D. So they now go in clockwise or counterclockwise in this case. Let's roll, prove it a trapezoid. Only one and only one and only one property of a trapezoid we gotta worry about is what? One pair of opposite sides are parallel. All right, uh, pretty obvious from here which uh, the two sides are. What formula am I gonna need to show two lines are parallel? <coughs> slope, let's roll, slope. So I'm gonna show the slope of, which one do you wanna show first, DC or AB? DC, no formula needed. What type of line is DC? Don't call it straight, get out of here. It's horizontal. Anybody remember the slope of a horizontal line? Zero. Zero. Yep. So you don't. You can do change in y over change in x if you wanted to. All right, but it would come out to be zero, and I don't need to. If it if it's zero, I don't need to see the formula. And same thing with AB. That's a horizontal line, and that'll also be zero. zero. Okay, they're parallel. But if you remember, also, not only do I need to show you those two are parallel. What about the other two sides? not parallel. So actually I need four slopes, not two slopes. Uh, let's go to CB first. CB. Slope of CB. What type of line is CB? Vertical. It's not zero. Undefined. No slope. So the slope of CB is undefined. Now I am going to have to do a little work for the slope of DA. Whether you guys do change in Y over change in X or rise over run. In your groups right now, quickly uh, find the slope of DA, and we'll report back here with somebody in a second. <clears throat> y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, or again, rise over run. Uh, when you're ready here, first one. Uh, number 23, when you're ready, slope of DA, positive 2. Nice job. Way to start it off today. Positive 2. Step 2, what did we just learn? It's, we didn't learn it was a trapezoid. What did we learn about DC and AB? They're parallel. DC parallel to AB because slopes are equal. And what else did we learn? Because we just didn't find 2. We found 4 slopes. What else did we find? DA is not parallel, and you can put the parallel sign with the slash through, that's fine. DA is not parallel to CB because slopes are not equal. And then finally, what is this figure? ABCD is A. Trapezoid, need a good reason why, need a good reason why, detailed answer why. Sorry if I didn't give you too much room. Why is it a trapezoid? Good reason why right now. Let's hear it. 29, let's roll. I'm not looking for an exact one here. I'm just looking for something that gets the job done. Okay, hold on. You're missing a word for me. One pair of opposite sides. Parallel. Keep going. Fine. One pair of opposite sides parallel and the other is not. And the other pair is not. All right. Nice. All right, biggest part of today, you're going to find another fact out about a trapezoid right now. Within your group, I don't want to give it to you. Uh, go ahead, read part B in your group. Find the midpoint of AC and BD for me. Find the midpoint of AC. Actually, I'm going to change that. Make that AC and BC. Nope, hold on. How about AD and BC? There we go. We just changed the letters, and I didn't change it on mine. So AD and CB, find the midpoints of AD and CB for me.
the non-parallel sides. And call them E and F for me. Uh, when you get it, when you're ready, point E. Uh, here we go, 16, point E, which is the midpoint of AD. What do you have for me? 2-3, two, three. Two, three. nice job. And then how about point F, the midpoint of CB. Here, let's roll. 10, what do you got for me? 3-5? Five. 5-3? Five, three. Midpoint formula, let's go. Midpoint formula, what is it? No, I'm just asking, in general, how do you find a midpoint? Oh, okay. Seven comma three. Everyone all right? Graph them. Graph them and graph that segment onto your trapezoid right now if you have not. Graph it for me. Two, three, and seven, three. Graph that line segment. We're going to give that a new name right now. We're going to give that line segment a new name. I just joined the what of these two sides? Midpoints. If I join the midpoints of two sides, the non-parallel sides of a trapezoid, this name is going to be a mid-segment. I know, pretty fancy, those mathematicians. Mid-segment by joining the midpoints of two sides. What's so special about this bad boy? Go ahead and find out. Find the slope of that mid-segment right now, EF. Uh, should take you about two seconds, right? What type of line is it? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. One jab. It is horizontal. So what's the slope? Zero. No problem. Oh, it's zero. Didn't a couple other lines come out to be zero? We'll have to talk about that. Now go ahead. Find the length of AB, EF and CD, you should not have to use the distance formula, maybe your fingers instead. Distance formula not needed. I don't need to go to anybody here. AB, what do you have? AB. 6, EF, 5, and CD, 4, there we go, all right, 6, 4, 6, and the mid-segment was 5, all right, let's come up with this theorem now. What should I know about a mid-segment of a trapezoid? First, start in part C, slope came out to be 0, what can you tell me about if the slope came out to be 0, and so did these two up here. It's parallel, all right, so let's get that down first, it should be on the next one. Here's the theorem, mid-segment of a trapezoid. What did you just find out by finding the slope was zero, which was equal to the other two sides? Mid-segment is parallel to the other two parallel sides. So now you have three parallel sides in there. So the mid-segment is parallel to the other two sides. Oh, and this, this one might be harder. I mean, might need some studs here to figure out this next one. 
Why did I find the distances? What could you tell me about the distance of the mid segment compared to the distances of the other? I need more than it's in the middle. Need a lot more. How can I find it? Basically, if you know the if you know the lengths of the two bases, how can you find the mid segment other than saying it's in the middle? Average, yes. So let's say, ready, the length is half the sum of the lengths of the two parallel sides. All right. So it's parallel to the other two and half its length, the sum of its length. Okay, mid segment of a trapezoid. Questions from you guys. All right, next one. This is nothing new, so I'm not going to stand up here and do it with you, proving it's a parallelogram. I do want to go over all the different options, and then you and your group are going to decide. It's not going to be two people do it one way and the other people do it another way. You and your group are going to decide what you want to do. So when, I, when you and your group are ready, I can just simply come on over and look at one paper, and I know everyone else has done it the same. So let's first talk here before we get moving. There are four different ways to prove it a parallelogram. Four different ways. And I want it, I want to get those four ways out of you right now. Not only tell me how to do it, what formula do formula or formulas do I need? And you'll have to don't write this down. I'm just going to write it up here. You and your group are going to choose which way. And then you're going to do it in the blank space there. One way I can show it's a parallelogram. Yes, Al. So you're, tr you're saying one way is opposite sides parallel, and you need what formula? So I need four slopes to do that. Yes. All right, maybe you and your group aren't feeling that. What's another way I could do it? Let's keep rolling. Hello, Orion. Opposite sides congruent. I would need what for that? What's formula? Four distances, if you're feeling distances. All right, let's keep going. Two others, two others. Usually you don't touch these, but not bad. Hi, Emma. Yep, the special case. One pair of opposite sides, congruent and parallel. What, would I, what formula would I need for this one? Two slopes and two distances. You never know. Some people may choose that. And there's one more. My personal opinion, I think this is the easiest one to do. <laughs> Why don't we even acknowledge that? What do you know about the diagonals of a parallelogram? Diagonals bisect each other. Anybody remember what I need to find to show, prove that? Anybody remember what needs the formula we haven't even talked about yet? Show the diagonals have the same midpoints. Yes, two midpoints. Show the diagonals have the same midpoints. Up to you. Decide. Decide. Let me see it when it's done. Your call. Yeah. 